I tell outsiders that I live in Las Vegas, but I don't, actually. I live in Henderson, which is in Clark County, and so is Las Vegas, but so are a lot of other places, which is confusing. I'm bringing this up because Clark County Commissioner Tick Siegerblum just proposed that we change Clark County's name to Las Vegas County. So today on CityCast Las Vegas, I'm here with UNLV history professor Michael Green and my co-host David Figler to talk about whether a county name change is a good idea or if it would cause even more confusion. It's Tuesday, July 23rd. I'm Sarah Lohman, and here's what Las Vegas is talking about. Okay, Michael and David, why is Clark County versus Las Vegas City in the news yet again? David, you want to give me a little rundown? Sure. County Commissioner Tick Siegerblum uh, has long been pontificating that there's just too much confusion that the city of Las Vegas, the moniker Las Vegas, doesn't truly belong to the unincorporated Clark County and most famously the Las Vegas Strip, which Mm. anyone will tell you who lives here does not exist within the technical boundaries of the city of Las Vegas. And so everything from the, you know, the minutia of what do you name the key that you give out to famous people and celebrities? Like uh, the city of Las Vegas gives out the key to the city. That's a very mm. common thing around the country. And the county commission has to give out the key to the strip, which is just weirdly framed. But also like different responsibilities and generally speaking, what people think about when they hear Las Vegas versus the people who live in Las Vegas and what they think of themselves. Oh, you know, we do have some bit of an identity crisis. I think Mike could speak to that. Well, you can go back to when North Las Vegas was talking about changing its name to Vegas Verdes. Oh. Because otherwise they were just, you know, north of Las Vegas. And the city of Las Vegas has never been really happy that the city ends at Sahara and then all the fun begins. <laughs> it goes back to something Oscar Goodman said years ago. He'd go down to the Strip on New Year's Eve and he'd be among about 300,000 people. And he'd say, they didn't know I wasn't the mayor yeah. of where they were standing. But and they still won't be the Clark County Commissioner or the Las Vegas County Commissioner. They'll be the mayor of Las Vegas, right? Yeah, that's not going to change, I guess. And does this mean that Laughlin will now be in Las Vegas? <laughs> County. County. Yes. Might shake him up a little bit. You guys. <laughs> okay, so why now? Why is Tick uh, proposing this now for a name change? And when does he see this would actually happen? I could speculate why now. I I think it just keeps coming up um, that it's not Las Vegas, but it is Las Vegas. And I think he thinks it's just confusing. Look, Tick is a a big proponent for name changes in general. Mm. He was a force behind changing McCarran International Airport to Harry Reid. He was a force in changing that uh, short but powerful and mighty segment near the commercial center of Karen to Liberace. Um, Mm. And now here he goes again uh, for whatever reasons. But he was waiting for another county commissioner, it seems. uh, And in this case, it was former chair Marilyn Kirkpatrick uh, to say, yeah, you know, there does seem to be a lot of confusion of what is and isn't this haloed, um, storied, moniker, Las Vegas. Well, and the other thing is that I guess Tick recently became commission chair, Mm. which means he is probably doing a lot more of the uh, grip and grin, uh, present the award kind of thing. And I'd be willing to bet that a couple of people have said to him, oh, are you the mayor? (laughs) I mean, if you think about it, uh, he, Marilyn Kirkpatrick, they've been in those positions. Yeah. You know, the other thing is, Sarah, I just want to point out, it's like whenever a big issue happens on the Strip, It seems like national media wants to get the input of the Las Vegas mayor because that is just a familiar thing. And they don't call the chair of the county commission. And they probably want to change that, too. They're like, well, when one October, something horrible like one October happens or something magical like the Super Bowl or whatever, they should be talking to the chair of the county commission because we're way more powerful and we are way more Las Vegas than even the Las Vegas mayor. So I think he thinks it's probably just a little housekeeping. 
Okay, so like he's feeling like he's playing second fiddle to the mayor of Las Vegas. But in truth, I mean, also knowing Tick speak, I hope he's just like, no, actually, I've got more power around here. But you know what? Let me ta- ask about the name change specifically, because speaking of like McCarran and Harry Reid, like who was Clark? Michael, I have a feeling you know. Well, William Andrews Clark was a copper baron, among other things, oh. out of Montana. And he had made his fortune there. And then he bought his way into a U.S. Senate seat. And he was so transparent about it, this was in the days when the legislature elected U.S. senators, Mm -hmm. that they wouldn't seat him because of Mm -hmm. the bribery involved. And he said something like, I didn't buy anybody who wasn't for sale. Mm. Eventually, he got in as a senator. And then early in the 20th century, he wanted to build a railroad. E.H. Harriman of Union Pacific started building his own line. And Clark and Harriman split ownership, with Clark being responsible for the operations which meant that he was really in charge of Las Vegas. The railroad really ran the town through the Las Vegas Land and Water Company okay. and controlling utilities and that sort of thing. And this is 1905? 1905, when the railroad auctions off uh, the downtown site. Okay, and we become Las Vegas, essentially. And Clark visited a couple of times, but it, there isn't evidence that he had great interest in this little community uh, for which a lot of people gave him credit. But here was the problem. Las Vegas was part of Lincoln County, and the county seat is Pioche, which was about 150 miles, and there wasn't even a direct rail link. Hmm. So if you're in the town of Las Vegas and you want to do business, need to get a county license, you have to take the train partway, then maybe get a stage line or ride a horse or walk whatever. And the other thing was that back in the 1870s, Lincoln County had decided to build a courthouse. And it was supposed to cost about $60,000. And by the time they were done with the corruption and the overbilling and all that, it cost about 800000 hmm. And people in Las Vegas really thought that the county would stick it to them for the debt. I see. So that there's a combination of reasons for Las Vegans to say, we want a new county. And when they went to the legislature for it in 1909, they thought that one way to get some support for it would be to call it Clark County, because this nice Montana copper baron supporting it would probably influence the legislature. Huh. So it's he. It's not that he was like, he doesn't sound like the best historical figure, but he also doesn't sound like the worst. But he also, uh, he also he's, you know. I just want to say this. Copper barons in yeah. the turn of the century probably not weren't amazing. the best people. Not the best people. I mean, there was another name that they used for those kind of barons, and it started with the, the letter R and ended with Auber. Oh, yep, that's true. <laughs> but he also didn't seem to be terribly involved with the, the county itself. Was he even well, a resident here? No, but he did get into fights. So Clark was mucking around with the organic shaping of our area uh, from afar for for all intents and purposes and accumulated a ton of money, very little of which uh, filtered its way to our state, let alone the Las Vegas area. Yes, if the Clark family wants to create the William Andrews Clark chair in history at UNLV, get a hold of me, but I don't expect <laughs> Hi, I'm David Plotz, the CEO of CityCast. The best way to learn a language is immersion, living where the language is spoken and using it every day. That's how I learned French as a kid. But if that's not in the cards for you this year, you can still learn a language the second best way, and that's with Babbel. I live in a city with a huge immigrant population. You probably do too. And in my hometown, a lot of my new neighbors speak Spanish as a first language, and we have lots of great Mexican and Central American and South American restaurants and stores. I want to be able to communicate just a little bit better with some of my neighbors. So I started with Babbel, the science-backed language learning app that actually works. And after just a few extremely enjoyable weeks learning Spanish with Babbel, I've already gotten comfortable ordering at a restaurant and eavesdropping on my girlfriend's conversations with her mom. Look, learning a language isn't always easy, but with Babbel, it is fun and it feels useful basically immediately. That's why Babbel has over 16 million subscriptions sold. Plus, all of Babbel's 14 award-winning language courses are backed by their 20-day money-back guarantee. Here's a special limited-time deal for CityCast listeners. Right now, get up to 60% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash citycast. Get up to 60% off at babbel.com slash citycast. 
spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash CityCast. Rules and restrictions may apply. You probably know that spam, the kind everyone hates, that makes it past the filters in your inbox or even into sneaky fake text messages, starts with your personal data being sold. But of course it does. Apparently, every day, data brokers collect and sell your personal information to third parties. This means your address, phone numbers, health and financial records, even your social security number is out there for the take-in. These insights are then used by scammers, total strangers, insurance companies, banks, and other businesses to target you. That's where Incognit comes in. Incogni scrubs your personal info from the web. Simple as that. And it only takes three minutes to set up. They tackle 180 plus data brokers and people search sites. And there's a 30 day money back guarantee. Protect your data, your time and your sanity. Go to incogni.com and use the code CityCast for a 55% off their annual plan. That's spelled out I-N-C-O-G-N-I dot com. You know, there was some speculation that, like, Las Vegas wouldn't like this change. And that is kind of not how it turned out. Or maybe. OK, so let's let's start with what is the historical relationship between the city and county been like? And then we'll cover some of the present day. So, Michael, can you jump in here? Well, yeah, the the city and the county often have been at odds. Mm-hmm. Is how I'll put it gently. And part of it is the the idea that, you know, the strips in the county. You go back into the 40s when Thomas Hull built the first hotel on the Strip, the El Rancho Vegas, he wanted to be outside the city limits. He did not want to deal with the municipal taxes and fees, so he goes across what was then San Francisco Street, long timers, now Sahara Avenue. But for most of the 40s, the hotels that were being built near there, especially the Last Frontier and the Thunderbird, both of them were using some municipal services. There were some water and sewer lines and that sort of thing. And the mayor at the time, Ernie Cragen, speaking of problematic, <laughs> uh, because he, he was known for uh, supporting various restrictive covenants and uh, laws against uh, integration. Code word mm. racist. Mm. But at any rate, Cragen was saying, wait a minute, you're using our resources. Be in the city or do something else. And the result is that the casino operators go to the legislature get this approved, then they go to the county commission and get it approved to create what are called unincorporated townships. Mm -hmm. So you can live in Henderson Mm -hmm. and someone else can be a Mesquitean or whatever we're going to call them, but I truly live in paradise. Right, right. Paradise, Nevada, an unincorporated township that encompasses the Strip. And it comes up on your cell phone where you're trying to identify where you are. It'll just shoot up Paradise, which freaks people out. They're like, what's this even all about? I thought I was in Las Vegas. Exactly. But my mailing address is still Las Vegas. Which is also weird. How does that work, Mike? Uh, I don't know that it really matters because they really look at the zip code. Mm. Mm. But if you go back uh, into the 80s, when uh, Citicorp was going to build a credit card processing plant here, they were going to be based at the Lakes, and they wanted the return address to be the Lakes, Nevada, because they figured if you get a credit card bill from Las Vegas... Mm-hmm. You think it's a scam. Yeah, you're gonna, <laughs> or, or you're going to be very nervous about what Citicorp is doing with your money. Oh, mm-hmm. sure. So, David, what is the vibe check on how Las Vegas feels about Las Vegas County? Have you, have you gotten any inklings? I, I think there would be a great deal of resistance. Um, because there's enough of an identity struggle of establishing, like, what does it mean to live in the city of Las Vegas? And, you know, we have our parks and we have our schools and we have our community churches and whatever else it is and our natural wonders. Um, and Fremont and Street and the Arts District we're, and downtown. We're a city, mm-hmm. but we're always overshadowed by, you know, the the bigger thing you know, we're however many hundred thousands of people versus the 40 some million visitors who, when they come to Las Vegas, they don't think of us per mm. se, the city of Las Vegas. Uh, they're lucky if they find us, but they're really hyper focused on the the one main street. And secondarily, I would argue Glitter Gulch or Fremont Street. Right. Mm. Um, yeah. and, and so I, I think that it, it definitely benefits the county to call itself Las Vegas a little more than it does the city to lose 
what uniqueness uh, and identity we already have to our bigger county brother. Hmm. And, you know, Tick cited L.A. County. Right. Well, if you look at L.A. County, it also includes Pasadena, Burbank, Glendale, a bunch of smaller, though not tiny, cities, and in fact, some smaller cities. I don't know how many people say when they're in Pasadena, say for the Rose Parade, that they're in L.A. Right. But here, people come to the Strip and they still think they're in Las Vegas, unless these historian types are disabusing them of the notion, which... We should be told not to do, of course. Just roving the strip, yelling at people, you're not in Las Vegas. Get off my lawn. Let's get a grant for that. Oh, my God. I want to make that viral video (laughs) where I just scream at people, you're not in Las Vegas. (laughs) Vegas, baby. Wrong place. It's county, baby. (laughs) I I told you my idea to just be a history history busker, Uh, but it was I was going to do it on Fremont Street. So I just have to scream about paradise instead. I did that before I was tenured. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Just a history busker. That's called being a junk professor. Yeah. You've both touched on this a little bit, but let's talk about what are the pros and cons of a name change. So rattle off some pros for me. Pros of Las Vegas County. Uh, That the county commissioners get to say that they're Las Vegas commissioners and maybe get a little bit more respect by the national media and and who knows, maybe um, their own constituents. Mm Mm-hmm. Michael? And it, can cl- it can clear up some confusion for people. It could create other confusion. That's a con. Mm-hmm. But it, the confusion are you in Las Vegas, Clark County. Well, any which way it's Las Vegas, mm-hmm. Las Vegas County. We're just outside the city. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. David, another? Uh, well, you know, they I could, don't know if there are. I'm just curious. I know. I mean, they could they could they could do a little name branding uh, better. Uh, and, mm-hmm. and so, and when they're dealing with these companies that want to relocate to Las Vegas, it could just be a little bit more clear on that end. Although I think it, you know, the, the, the con is that it makes it more confusing for the city of Las Vegas, which mm-hmm. has always had the, the brand. It, it, it's so weird, right? I mean, mm. when people talk about Las Vegas in the news, when people talk about Las Vegas everywhere from the New York Times to the L.A. Times, they're, when they talk about Las Vegas, they really mean the Las Vegas Valley or the metro right. Las Vegas mm-hmm. area. And nobody makes that clarification. And so maybe just by purging Clark, um, mm. they have the opportunity to do that, to establish their own identity a little more. Though, as a Las Vegan, uh, as somebody who's lived like on the border my whole life, one way or the other, either right in Winchester, mm-hmm. which is just on the other side of, of the line, uh, another unincorporated township or the city of Las Vegas, where I've been for the last 23 years specifically. I, I do like the claim of Las Vegas not being that place, the tourist place, the city mm. of the 44 million versus the city of the rest of us. So would the name change create more confusion or less confusion in your opinions? I think the answer is yes. Great. <laughs> I, think there will be, I think there will be people who will be more confused about it. I think there will people be people who will be less confused. And, I mean, I, I could see both sides, and I can see leaving well enough alone. And I say that as someone who spoke at Tick's uh, request on why we needed to get McCarran's name off the airport. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm going to side on more chagrin for the citizens of Las Vegas. Uh, I, that We have everything to lose and nothing to gain from this name change. Uh, whereas the county seems to have a lot to gain from it. Look, there has been this dispute uh, that Michael and I talked about on this very podcast uh, not terribly mm-hmm. long ago about whether one should annex the other to really get rid of the confusion. Uh, you know, a name change is almost the existential equivalent of just slapping some new paint on the outside of a building. Uh, the real core issues are the the challenges between jurisdictional responsibilities where there are joint efforts, things like the Clark County School District, the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, the separate fire departments, the -hmm. the solutions for social service uh, needs, uh, especially as it relates to homelessness. I mean, none of that's going to go away with a name change. Okay, the the jurisdictional conflicts will still remain. Uh, I think ultimately it adds to Uh, more confusion than clarity. And while I'm a big fan of clarity, I also wish that they would focus their energies on according the conflicts that create the chaos uh, that exists with having a name branded city that's smaller Mm -hmm. than the big unincorporated area with all the power and the engine of commerce in the midst of it. (laughs) 
I.e. the strip. Annex it all. Borough of Paradise. Borough annex, of one way or the other, annex it. One we are, government. We're all, we all become Las Vegas and maintain our identities. <laughs> yeah, that's right. a great solve. All right, so wrapping I'm this on up. Board. Great. Tick, call me. Let's talk it out. Let's make it happen. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's say we throw out this whole idea of Las Vegas County, but we are going to change the name of, of Clark County to something else, but not Las Vegas County. So what would it be and why? And I welcome both serious and unserious answers. <laughs> Mike, you go first. No. Oh. <laughs> well, I figured we, we have Reed International. It's time for Bryan County in honor of Richard Bryan, who was a senator. Your favorite. He was. But I'm biased because I write Nevada Yesterdays, which he reads. But at the same time, uh, over on been... KMPR, which is a, a great history program. And of course, you're referring to former senator and governor of Nevada and attorney general. Man, mm. that guy couldn't keep a job. Uh, really? Richard Bryan. But, you know, it, it would be fine to name it for uh, mountains, for something associated with Native American peoples in the area. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, this area was called Paiute County. Mm. It was part of Arizona Territory. That would be nice. Yeah, I was thinking recently with name changes about uh, there's been a lot of name changing in Alaska, right? To return yeah. uh, the names of places, both towns and natural features to indigenous names. OK, David, who do you think? Well, I like what Michael says um, about uh, an appropriate indigenous name. Uh, we don't give enough, uh, I, I think, measure down here uh, for mm -hmm. for that. You know, you could you could go after the desert, Mojave County, uh, although that might be confusing with Arizona, which I believe also has a Mojave County. Maybe mm. we could be Sagebrush County, although that sounds a little dry. Uh, you still want to have people come <laughs> here David. to. Sorry, I do love all the connotations of that area being remaining paradise. You know, but um, I you like think... you would like Paradise County. Why not? No, well, I mean, just keeping, I mean, I just like, yeah, Paradise County actually does sound interesting. However, I guess a little bit of opposite state to that is I do think that Clark County should be named after one of the greatest entrepreneurs of the area, Terrible Herbst. So obviously it becomes Terrible County. Terrible <laughs> County. Yeah. There that'll, you go, that'll get tourists. That would make so much sense. <laughs> yeah, that would. Well, you know, they, they said that's a terrible idea, right? Wasn't that the yep. uh, apocryphal lore? Of um, <laughs> of the Herbst <laughs> Empire, and they go, no, yeah, we can embrace it. They leaned into it. Yeah, you won't have, you won't have a terrible time, but you might do some terrible things. Sounds great. <laughs> All right, Michael, David, thank you so much. I guess we're just going to see what happens. Thank you. City Cast County might be available as well. Now we're talking. That's all for today here on CityCast Las Vegas. If you enjoyed the show, share it with a friend and weigh in. What do you think? Clark County? Las Vegas County? Mr. Piffles County? Let us know. You can also rate the show and leave us a review, please. And also subscribe to our morning newsletter. That's Hey Las Vegas. You can subscribe at our website. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Take care. There's actually a theory that another Clark influenced the legislature, Ed W. Clark, uh, who was a oh. political and business figure down here. And allegedly, uh, he sent some uh, whiskey to the legislature. <laughs> and also the namesake for Clark High School. Yes, oh. the only person for whom a high school is named in this county.